Hello, welcome to Rogers Math. This is Jesse Rogers, and we are taking our first look at Fall Challenge 2022. I've been waiting for this, and finally today is the first day that it is out. So let's take a look. And it looks like this coding game is going to be uh, opening the bronze, only up to bronze so far. Silver is opening on December 19th, so we've got a couple days, about, we've got about five days to keep up with everybody if we're going to get to silver and let's see this is called keep off the grass i guess that's the name of the game uh, and the idea with this let's go ahead and read this control more patches than your opponent at the end of the match robots are deployed in a field of abandoned electronics their purpose is to refurbish patches of this field into functional tech the robots are also capable of self-disassembly and self-replication, but they need raw materials from structures called recyclers, which the robots can build. The structures will recycle everything around them into raw matter, essentially removing the patches of electronics and revealing the grass below. Players control a team of these robots in the midst of a playful competition to see which team can control the most patches of a given scrap field. They do so by marking patches with their team's color, all with the following constraints. If robots of both teams end up on the same patch, they must disassemble themselves one for one. The robots are therefore removed from the game, only leaving at most one team on that patch. The robots may not cross the grass. Robots are still that are still on a patch when it is completely recycled must therefore disassemble themselves too. Once the games are over, the robots will dutifully reassemble and go back to work as normal. So we have blue team and red team. The game is played on a grid of variable size. Each tile of the grid represents a patch of scrap electronics. The aim of the game is to control more tiles than your opponent by having robots mark them. Each tile has the following properties. There's a scrap amount. This patches amount of usable scrap. It is equal to the amount of turns it will take to be completely recycled. If zero, this patch is grass. Owner, which player's team controls this patch, will equal negative one if the patch is neutral or grass. Robots, any number of robots can occupy a tile, but if units of opposing teams end the, same, end the turn on the same tile, they are removed one for one. Afterwards, if the tile still has robots, they will mark that tile. All right, so if we had four robots entering a tile that already has one enemy robot and two more enemy robots join it, the net result will be four minus three, which is one robot of the blue color. All right, makes sense. So robots may not occupy a grass tile or share a tile with a recycler. Recyclers are structures that take up a tile. Each turn, the tile below and all adjacent tiles are used for recycling, reducing their scrap amount and providing one unit of matter to the recycler's owner. If the tile under a recycler runs out of scrap, the recycler is dis dismantled. A given tile can only be subject to recycling once per turn meaning its scrap amount will go down by one, even if a player has multiple adjacent recyclers, providing that player with only one unit of matter. If a tile has adjacent recyclers from both players, the same is true, but both players will receive one unit of matter. Matter. Ten units of matter can be spent to create a new robot or build another recycler. At the end of each turn, both players receive an extra ten matter. Actions. On each turn, players can do any amount of valid actions, which include move, a move, uh, move a number of units from a tile to an adjacent tile. You may specify a non-adjacent tile to move to, in which case the units will automatically select the best move to approach the target. So it does its own pathfinding for you. Uh, that's kind of nice. Okay, so build. Erect a recycler on the given empty tile the player controls. So you can only erect recyclers on tiles you control. Good to know. Spawn. Construct a number of robots on the given tile the player controls. 
And remember that it cannot be on a recycler. Recyclers, uh, I think it said somewhere that recyclers uh, cannot have the robots on that square. It's just going to be the recycler itself. So you can sort of use them as a wall, I think. Um, all right, so action order for one turn. Build. Actions are computed. Move and spawn actions are computed simultaneously. A robot cannot do both on the same turn. Okay, so move and spawn actions are computed simultaneously, meaning that it looks like robots sort of have summoning sickness, I guess, because uh, if they spawn, they're not going to be able to also move. Uh, units of opposing teams on the same tile are removed one for one. Then the next thing is remaining robots will mark the tiles they are on, changing their owner. Then recyclers affect the tiles they are on and the four adjacent tiles that are not grass. Tiles with size zero are now grass. Recyclers and robots on that tile are removed. The players receive 10. Last thing is players receive 10 base matter as well as the matter from recycling. Cool. Okay. So victory condition is if a player no longer controls a single tile, uh, the winner is the player who controls the most tiles. So your goal is to control territory. Most tiles after either a player no longer controls a single tile. So if you totally destroy the other player, uh, 20 turns have passed without any tile changing scrap amount or owner. So the game is just sort of stagnant, I guess. And 200 turns have been played. So those are your victory conditions, defeat conditions. This looks pretty common. Your program does not provide a, a command in the allotted time, or it provides an unrecognized command. Uh, so that's pretty typical. If we don't give it a command, then we lose. So debugging tips. Okay, so it says hover over a tile to see extra information about it, including its history. Use the message command to display some text on your side of the HUD. Press the gear icon on the viewer to access extra display options. Use the keyboard to co control the action. Space to play, pause, arrows to step one frame at a time. Okay, so we can actually use keyboard controls here. Technical details. A tile's owner will not change if there are no robots on it at the end of the turn. Ah, okay. If the target of a move is unreachable, the robots will target the reachable tiles closest to the given de definition, preferring the one closest to the center of the map. When selecting a path to move to a distant tile, robots will take the shortest route, preferring to stay near the center of the map when possible. Move and spawn happen simultaneously and cannot conflict with each other. However, they may be canceled by a build action, even if it comes later in the player's output or is part of the opponent's actions, okay? So if you're trying to move on to a square and they build a recycler on that square, you will not be able to move on to that square. Makes sense. Game protocol, initialization input. One line, two integers, width and height for the size of the map. The top left tile is x, y equals zero, zero. That's pretty standard too. Top left uh, corner is usually zero, zero, and then numbers increase for X as you go to the right and increase for Y as you go down. So it's a little bit disorienting if you're used to the coordinate plane from a math class, but it makes sense as you, uh, you know, get used to playing games. So input for one game turn, uh, first line, Two integers, my matter and opponent matter for the amount of matter owned by each player. Good. So you can compare how you're doing as opposed to your opponent. Next, height and width lines one per cell starting at zero, zero and incrementing from left to right, top to bottom. Each cell is represented by seven integers. Okay. Wow. So this is going to be, depending on how large this gets, there could be quite a lot of integers represented on this map. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, this is seven integers here. We've got, let's see, where are we? Okay. First four variables describe the properties for this tile. Scrap amount, the number of times this tile can be recycled before becoming grass. Owner, and I guess that's zero if it's already grass. 
owner. One if you control this cell, zero if the opponent controls this cell, negative one otherwise. Units, the number of units on this cell. These units belong to the owner of the cell. Recycler, one if there is a recycler on the cell, if the recycler belongs to the owner of the cell, zero. If there is no recycler on the cell. Okay, so it's one if there is a recycler on the cell, it will always belong to the owner. That makes sense because it can't be removed once you put down a recycler. It can't be removed until it's grass. Okay, if there is no recycler on the cell, that's going to be a zero. The next three variables are helper values. Can build. One, if you are allowed to build a recycler on this tile this turn, zero otherwise. Can spawn. One, if you are allowed to spawn units on this tile this turn, zero otherwise. In range of recycler. One, if this tile's scrap amount will be decreased at the end of the turn by a nearby recycler, zero otherwise. All right, so those are handy. Um, we don't, I don't think we have to use them, but we certainly can. We could write some functions that will take advantage of that. So the output, all of your actions on one line separated by a semicolon. We're going to move an amount of robots, I think they mean, from some x value and from some y value to some x value and to some y value. We're going to build x and y to build a recycler. We're going to spawn amount xy to add a unit to an owned tile. So I think we could actually add several units, it looks like. Spawn, like if the amount was two or three, maybe we could build multiple robots in the same turn in the same tile. Wait does nothing. Message text displays text on your side of the HUD. OK. So let's go ahead and run this thing and just see what it looks like and get a feel for this. This is our first run through for Fall Challenge 2022. So you can see our blue guys are not doing anything. They're just staying there. Computer is slowly taking over the map. I'm going to have to pause this for a second. Okay, sorry about that. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Where were we? We were, oh yeah. Let's rewind this a little bit. Okay, I'm going to play this. And it only takes 30 turns for the computer to completely destroy us. So it will last up to 200 turns. We don't get there, obviously, because it is programmed to take over our squares. And it has no trouble doing that when we're not building any units. We're not moving our units around. So that is it. OK. So we've got our program over here. Uh, the typical imports of sys and math, and they've given us these variables to initialize width and height. Notice these are not within the game loop. And then while true, now we're starting our game loop here, and it's every turn going to give us my matter, opponent matter, and then for i in range height and for j in range width, it's going to give us cell by cell information about this board. OK, so we're going to have to collect this information. And I think what we want to do is maybe create a dictionary here of cell. So this is going to be um, scrap amount will be scrap. All right, I'm not going to abbreviate. I'll just use scrap amount is going to be, and that needs to be in parentheses or in uh, quotation marks because that is going to be a string scrap amount, which is going to be mapped to scrap amount the integer. And then we're going to have owner, which is going to be owner. I'm just setting up my dictionary here and populating it with all of these um, variables. And we're going to have units, units, 
Recycler. Recycler. So you can see I'm just um, separating these with a comma, each one of these can spawn. Here's our helper. Integers uh, in range. That is just too long. Uh, let's let's call it in range. We'll just say in range. In range of recycler. Okay, and I think that was. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And they said there were seven variables. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I missed one, I guess. Scrap, owner, units, recycler. I missed can build. Let me do that one. Can build. Can build, comma, okay. So I think this is our dictionary now. So. What it's going to do is it's going to take all of these variables and it's going to feed it into a dictionary where this is the key and this is the value. So scrap amount, the string is going to be associated with whatever the scrap amount um, integer is. Owner, that string is going to be mapped to owner, this integer, and so on. And then what I'm going to need to do is um, create a cells list. And I am going to populate that cells.append cell. So what it's going to do is each additional cell is going to be added to this cells append. So all of the cells are now being stored in that list. Okay, so what do I want to do with this? So I think what I want to do is give the robots some instructions. So I'm actually going to have robots. And this is going to be like cells, but it's only going to be the ones that contain my robots. So let's make it my robots. So my robots are going to be if cell owner is equal to, and which one is me? I think I'm zero. Maybe I'm one. Owner, which team controls this patch will equal negative one. Uh, it says it down here, I think. Owner, one if you control the cell. So if cell owner equals one, then uh, let's go to my robots dot append cell. And there's another condition I have to put on here. Because uh, just because I own the cell doesn't mean there's a robot on it. So if cell owner is equal to one, which means it's my cell, and units uh, and cell units is greater than zero then my robots append cell. Okay, so now I've got a list that's gonna have my robots, a list that's gonna contain all the cells, and I probably want to have some move functions. Um, so I'm actually gonna define some functions up here. Uh, after the imports is usually where I put the uh, function definitions. So I'm gonna define a function, um, land grab so if there is land to take then 
I want my robots to go out and get it. And I'm going to have another function, recycler, or maybe build. Let's make build recycler. And uh, what else can we do? Spawn. We're going to need to spawn. Spawn units. All right, so those are all things that I'm going to need them to do. And maybe, maybe battle. So if I see enemy units next to my units and it looks like we have numerical superiority, then maybe I want to pick a fight and take over that square. So I think that's probably some basic functions that are at least going to get us on the map here. Notice that this is Wood League, so probably we're going to be able to beat this boss relatively easy. With uh, that, That's usually the case. So um, I don't think we're going to need too many more complex functions there. So we're just going to have to take over some land. So what would we what would we have the computer do in that case? We would have it, um, maybe, maybe we need to identify if a, um, if a square is neutral or if it's enemy. So, um, and maybe it should be close by too. I don't think we want to send our robots all the way across the map, I think. I think we want to, unless we're trying to take over their squares, maybe that's a good strategy. Let's try, let's try taking over their squares for land grab. Um, so let's say I'm, I'm going to need to pass it maybe my cells or my robots. And I'm also going to want to pass it Um, let's make another list, which is enemy squares. And this is going to be if so owner is, um, If cell owner is equal to zero, I think that was the enemy unit. So owner is zero if opponent controls the cell, yes. And cell units equals zero and cell recycler is zero and it can't be grass either right so if so uh, what was it scrap amount so scrap amount is greater than zero then enemy squares append cell. Okay, then we're gonna add that cell to the enemy squares. And so let's give it the squares. So enemy squares. Okay, so for I N my robots let's send them to I mean this could be just really uh, a very basic kind of thing where I just send it to enemy squares zero 
um, later I'm going to go back and send it to the closest enemy, enemy square. But for now, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to need to initialize a string too. So let's, let's say command equals a blank string. And so for I and my robots, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to add to that command such that it says um, command plus equals and what are my choices here it's gonna be move move plus str of I, think I need a space there so move str of the amount so let's just say let's just say one I'm just gonna move one robot for now um, plus an open space from Ooh, you know what I'm gonna need? I didn't I didn't put this in initially, but I'm gonna need some coordinates. So X and Y. So X is going to be J and Y Y is going to be I because the X represents the width and the width is gonna be the J and the Y represents the height and that's going to be represented by i or iterated by i okay so for i and my robots command plus equals move str and i said one i'm just going to move one unit um, which i don't have to be that fancy with it i could just say move one move one space plus str this i do have to do from the x value which is going to be my robots x it's going to be an integer but it's going to be converted into a string and then plus space plus str my robots y plus space plus you know what let's give it a semicolon at the start here and i'll show you why in just a second or later on i should say it's not going to be right away but i'll show you why later uh, so Let's see, I've got move one plus str my robots x, str my robots y. Now I need to tell it where to go to. So this is going to be plus. And let's just send it to enemy squares zero. So it may not be the closest square, it's just going to be the first in that list. And it's going to send it to enemy square zero x but it needs to be a string because I have to have all of this as a string and one more space and then str of enemy squares zero y okay I think that should do it so basically what I'm having it do is just follow this move order. So move amount from X from Y to X to Y, and it's taking it from the X, Y position of my each of my robots, because it's going to do this for each of my robots. And it's going to, I don't want it to be my robot. Sorry, I need that to be I, because I'm iterating over this thing. So yes. I'm going to have this for I in my robots, 
and each of my robots is being abstracted to this I here and iterated over all of them. And I'm not doing that with the enemy squares. I'm, I'm actually just, this is not going to be in a very efficient uh, approach. This is just going to get it to one of the enemy squares, just arbitrarily chosen as the first one that's listed. And uh, so it's going to send all of my robots over to that enemy square that is zero. And that's pretty much that, I think. So then I need to return command. Okay, so what's going to happen is that it's going to um, feed the two lists, my robots and enemy squares, to this land grab. And uh, then I'm going to uh, return a command, and that command is what's going to be what ends up getting printed. Um, but I'm going to uh, first actually print message. Here we go. And then for no, and then I'm going to have it call this land grab. So I'm going to have it do land grab, copy this, and then have it do land grab my robots, enemy squares, and I think that should be it. So let's just see what happens. Let's see, let's see what uh, error messages it's going to give us, because usually whenever I get this far along and I uh, uh, try it out for the first time, usually there's going to be some error somewhere. That's very typical, so let's just find where the error is, and then we can fix it. Okay, so, so far it's not giving me any errors. This actually works pretty good. I think we're, I think we're, uh, yeah, we're looking pretty solid with our, with our land grabbing. Uh, but now we need to start spawning units. You can see we have tons of extra material building up here. And of course, you know, we, we could have a lot of bots being created here uh, if we were spending that. And that would give us the kind of army that could take over those, those spots. So the next thing we're going to do is... Um, Let's go to the while true. And what we're going to do is command um, plus equals land grab my robots enemy squares so let's try that and then we're just going to put command here like that okay so that is not what we want to do maybe like command that way okay does that work okay so far it's not throwing me an error so far so good Uh, okay. So I hadn't initialized command before, but now I think command plus equals message that says I can add more 
Okay, I'm going to play that code and let's see if it gives us an error because what I'm trying to do is is uh, add additional things. No, that is not going to work. Okay, so I can't do that because it's, it's disqualified because um, I am trying to add more to the string. Oh, I, maybe it's maybe it's just the semicolon. Maybe that's all it is. Let's try it one more time. Yeah. Okay. So I just needed semicolon. So I actually can add. I was I was thinking I could do this. So that will work pretty well. Okay. So now let me explain what my thinking is. What I want to do is one of these command lines is going to initialize command by uh, and actually, I could make this the initialization of it. Is it giving that message? I don't even see it. Where is it? Where is it printing that? Oh, well. Um, well, it's not it's not really that important. So what I want to do is let, let's let's develop these um, spawn units and recycler a little bit more. So spawn units, I'm going to go, I'm going to have to give it my matter. I'm going to have to give it my matter and I'm going to have to give it um, maybe cells. And let's just start making units everywhere. So um, if my matter is greater than 10, is greater than or equal to 10, um, or maybe, maybe while, let's spend it all. So while my matter is greater than or equal to 10 command equals no I don't want to do that inside of there I'm gonna put it out here command equals empty string so I'm actually gonna initialize it in every one of these um, or I could pass it, but I don't really want to keep passing it back and forth. I'm just going to initialize it fresh for each one of these functions. And so while my matter is greater than or equal to 10, I'm going to have for i in cells if cells owner Hmm. Do I need? Do I even need the while? Probably not. That's this is probably overkill. Let's say for i in my for i in cells if my matter is greater than or equal to ten. Then what I want to do is command plus plus equals. We're going to spawn spawn And it's going to be str of i x plus str of i y.
and I forgot to concatenate that. Okay, so I need a plus sign there. All right, so if my matter is greater than or equal to zero or 10, then command is gonna be to spawn and my matter needs to be reduced by 10 because we're um, spending 10 on building a new unit. So if my matter is greater than or equal to 10, spawn a new unit. And it's gonna do that on every one of the cells. So if, for, if my matter is greater than 10 and I owner is me, which is one, I think that's, yeah, one if I control the cell and I recycler is n not equal to one, then we're gonna spawn a unit there. And then we're gonna return command just like before. All right, so I'm not gonna plus add, I can add more. I'm gonna plus add this spawn units command. So I'm gonna control C, control C. Okay, so let's go ahead and just play that and see what happens. Let's find out if this actually works or if there's an error okay it looks like there's an error what did i forget so that answer okay so we didn't provide a line of code because if my matter is greater than or equal to 10 and the owner is equal to one and the recycler is not equal to one then command is going to be spawn my matter and cells key error is zero so what did i enter what did i have it enter it just gives gives a key error. All right. For I in cells. Cells is a list that should have an owner field, and it should have. Oh, what have I done? I forgot to put that in print in uh, quotations. Sorry about that. Let's try it again. Okay, similar problem. So what are we doing? Disqualified. So expected spawn NXY, but got spawn 12, 0. Oh, oh, I didn't give it the number. So let's just have it spawn 1. Spawn 1. That's what it needs. Okay. So incorrect syntax. I have to give it the number of units I want it to spawn. So there we go. Okay, I did spawn a unit. I, I am spawning units, look at this. I'm spawning units as we go. And I'm spawning more units than the computer has. So my tanks are overpowering them, here we go. I am on the march, look at that. I actually have more, I have more um, sites than the computer at, the, at this moment. So I am, on track to at least staying competitive here. I might even win. Yeah, we got a nice tank battle going and they've got unused parts. So I, that is allowing me to pull ahead. So I told you it doesn't take that much to be able to defeat the computer on this uh, initial setting. And the recycler is probably gonna end up, even though it's giving them more um, 
more parts, it's probably going to end up chewing up some of their area. So yeah, I think I think I'm going to be able to just sort of overrun these guys. We'll see. We'll see. I'm still in the lead. As we go along, yeah, they keep putting in recyclers, but I have <laughs> I just have a ton of these tanks. And there we go. So I ended up losing. How did I lose? Okay, so index error, index list index out of range. So this was in land grab. So for for I and my robots. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna indent this and I'm gonna say if my robots greater than zero and it should be the length of my robots so basically this is saying if the list length is greater than zero here's what I want you to do otherwise you're gonna return command if it's empty and the cells will always be greater than zero so I don't think I have to do that with this one um, I think I'm probably going to be okay with this one without having to put that that extra condition. Uh, so let's see if that saves me. Because strategically, you can see I had 37 squares to their three. I was winning. I just ended up uh, 177 units into it, or 177 turns into it. I just ended up kind of getting an error message. So let's see here. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so the problem is, see how they, they're putting up a recycler right here, and I can no longer get to that location. So it looks like it's an illegal, it says uh, list index out of range. So they don't have in enemy squares. So if length of my robots is greater than zero and length of enemy squares greater than zero. Okay, let's try it again. All right. I'm making my tanks. I'm getting there. Okay, overpowering them. Yes, yes. Team blue is looking good. Okay, the strategy keeps working. And this time, finally, I think, yes, Roger's Math wins with 28 points. So we are going to be able to beat this Wood League. Let's test it in the arena and see what happens. All right, that is all it took. You can see you don't need to have a perfect algorithm. I didn't even finish my strategy here. I, did, I didn't even give it. A, a, a strategy for uh, building recyclers or for uh, charging the enemy tanks and doing battle. You know, I didn't, th this is not filled out at all. This is just a really, really rudimentary kind of, um, I didn't optimize for, for going to the enemy squares that are closest, nothing like that. I, all I'm doing is uh, just, you know, really a very basic approach to this. And it seems to be sufficient. So I'm beating everybody with this simple algorithm. Uh, did not take too long to code. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, so you can see we're, we're ahead of the computer now as well. So it's only a matter of time. Battles in progress is 47%. Uh, it's it's going to move us ahead to the next league. Once it gets to 100%, we are definitely looking good here. Um, so some things that I want to try um, it, just to kind of talk some strategy, I I like kind of what they're doing here, where you know they're accelerating the uh, the amount of I, I think it's I think it's really a good idea to have a ton of units. So I think I think that might be good. But the problem is they're going to be just pretty much destroying most of their territory. So I think maybe what I'm going to do is try to put it, when I run into the enemy units, I could put up a wall if they have more units than I do. I could put up a wall of these recyclers and just sort of chew up their area. 
um, or or the middle area. I don't really want to destroy my my own area. You know what I mean? Um, so, although this person is winning, like at the moment, they're they're definitely winning. Um, let's see. Yeah, but the pro see that's the problem. That's exactly what I, what I was expecting. See how they just destroyed their entire um, their entire territory, and I still have a couple. I still have a couple of uh, squares over here that were untouched. So, you know, they really messed up with that. So I don't think, I don't think that strategy is, is the right one, but you can see I'm, I'm starting to lose some of these matches. Let's see the ones that the computer beats me at. So if they build a recycler early, they're going to have more, more parts and is that what makes the difference? Because it looks like I'm still going towards their area. Um, but they also kind of spread it out more. So Roger's math only has 14 there. But, it, you know, other times I do win. So this is not, and, and they did put the recycler right there at their starting spot. So... I don't know. Maybe putting the recycler at the starting spot is a good move. Maybe it's a bad move. We're going to have to see. But, uh, oh, no. Are you telling me? Okay. Yeah, no. It did place me above. All right. So I should be moved ahead now to the next league. Rogers Math number one. Okay. Promotion to Bronze League in 26 seconds, 24 seconds. Exciting stuff. I, I love the thrill of a new contest and a new tournament. So um, hopefully you guys will join me in the Fall Challenge 2022. There are uh, 25 days that this is going to run. This is only on day one. So you guys are right here at the beginning. And, and you have kind of a sneak peek of, of what my strategy has been so far. And, uh, of course, I'm going to tweak this quite a lot. Uh, but this at least puts you on the map and gets you started in the game. So... I hope you guys will join me, and uh, I will see you in the Bronze League. Until next time.